So the, the project is a phase two randomized trial of ambroxol in uh, Parkinson's disease dementia. So one of the biggest risk factors for Parkinson's dementia or um, Lewy body dementia is to be carrying a mutation in a, in a gene called GBA, which is the enzyme glucocerebrosidase. So if you have two uh, mutations, you have this terrible disease where you get a brain wasting disease in, in babies and uh, liver failure and blood failure, spleen, bone failure. Um, but if you only have one mutation, a pediatrician would say, ah, you're an asymptomatic carrier. But in fact, your risk of Parkinson's disease and Parkinson's dementia goes up by almost a factor of 10. And so this is a protein that's low in um, Parkinson's disease and Parkinson's dementia and Lewy body disease. Um, and in fact, people without these mutations, the enzyme is also low. So it's, it's uniform whether you have the mutation or not. Although pres perhaps presumably, if you have a mutation, your you know, risk factors, uh, your risk for getting the disease are higher. Um, the drug which we're studying is called Ambroxol. The lab where I was doing my postdoctoral work, the Hospitals for Sick Children in Toronto, Canada, uh, was looking for drugs which stabilize lysosomal enzymes. These are a family of de degradative enzymes, including this uh, gene GBA. And so they screened, I don't know, 30,000 drugs. And they also screened a small library of, of drugs that were already approved. And Ambroxol was one that came up um, really early on in the study. So Ambroxol is an over-the-counter cough medicine uh, available across the entire world, but not the United States or Canada. Uh, so no regulatory standing in, in North America. Um, but we, you can just walk in off the street and buy a box and it's got, so it's 40 years of use, outstanding safety data. Uh, the normal cough medicine dose is, I don't know, 60 to 150 milligrams a day. Uh, for our study, we actually needed to give 1,000 milligrams a day. And so that was initially a, a big worry, but it turns out in Europe, uh, this is a dose that's approved to give intravenously uh, to women uh, for, for, to aid uh, fetal lung maturation. So basically we had this drug with an outstanding safety um, profile, which is even given IV to, to pregnant women. And we have a disease which uh, we don't have any treatments for. And so actually what is unique is that we actually skipped the mouse phase of this study because basically I was able, we, we, were, we argued that actually the mouse models for Parkinson's disease don't actually work very well. So there are some mice that have the biochem biochemical changes but don't have a movement disorder. Or you can do a destructive lesion in a mouse and it has a movement disorder, but then the nerves are all dead and so you don't, it's not clear that you would be able to treat that. Anyway, so the original plan was to recruit uh, 75 patients and randomize them to a placebo, uh, a low dose 500 milligrams or a high dose 1,050 uh, milligrams and to go for a year. Um, we didn't know whether our dosing was going to be right at the time, whether we were giving too low or too high. Uh, what we knew is that in cell culture, you need probably five to 10 micromolar uh, doses, um, but some studies using up to 60 micromolar. Um, so that's a huge range. So we, we started off by modeling our drug, the, the drug, and it looked like we were probably going to get three micromolar in plasma. So that was, that was lower than we'd like. Um, so our, our original target was 75 patients. We actually cut that down. The target is, is 58 patients because we were, it's just taking so, so long to recruit. Um, so our recruitment closed in October. So we were able to enroll 55 patients. And so they're, uh, I mean, so at this point they're enrolled to either the placebo or the high dose. Um, what, I, what we can say is that we're getting very nice drug levels. The higher dose, the 1,050 milligram a day, we're getting 10 micromolar doses, uh, or the, the plasma level is 10 micromolar in blood. So this is right where we needed to be, I should say eight to 10 micromolar. So it's right where we needed to be. We were actually shown some preliminary data by a company called XR in uh, Princeton which suggests that brain uh, ambroxyl is 10 times higher than plasma ambroxyl. So we are getting these doses of, of eight to 10 micromolar in plasma, and we're able to measure glucocerebroside in the enzyme that we're looking at in white blood cells, and we're getting a nice bump in the levels of this enzyme. So this is what we were trying to do. We were, tr we were using ambroxyl to stabilize glucocerebrosidase and raise the level. And 
this is sort of cool because we're not doing gene therapy or anything fancy. We're just helping the body raise the amount of this enzyme uh, on its own without, without really any cell biology intervention. Anyway, so we're getting levels about one and a half times normal. And um, so at least we're, we're engaging the target. We've got enough patients, we hope, and we're getting decent blood levels. And we're gonna break the blind in November of 2022. Um, and you know, it's very hard to say, you know, at this point we're, we're blinded. We don't know what the outcome is. We do have some patients that are getting worse. We definitely also have some patients that are stable or maybe even a bit better. Um, now the question is what, you know, will they fall into the right groups or not? I don't know. And certainly many of our Parkinson's dementia patients actually have good short-term memory, so they could also be learning our tests. So I guess this is all gonna, you know, it will be depending on how randomization works, whether this, whether we've got a successful drug or not, but uh, really excited about it. And uh, hopefully same time next year, it'll be a much more interesting talk. What we're hoping is that this is a disease modifying drug that we're actually going to be able to lower the alpha synuclein deposition in patients. So now, do we know if they'll get better? We don't know, but what, so what we hope is that people will be held the same. It's hard to know with Parkinson's disease. So some of the movement disorder in Parkinson's disease is because the neurons in the substantia nigra are actually already dead and they're already dead before they even come into a doctor's office. So it's about 70% cell loss. Um, so I don't think that we could count on, you know, recovering the movement disorder function. We know in Alzheimer's disease, a lot of the cognitive um, impairment early on is because of loss of synapses. And if that's happening in Parkinson's disease, then that actually is something that might be reversible, at least to, some, to a certain degree. So we might see a, a cognitive improvement because the brain will grow back synapses. Um, again, so far, we, you know, I didn't comment on safety. Um, we've had uh, eight, eight serious adverse events not, that none of them appear to be related to the drug at all. Um, the Parkinson's patients are a difficult population to work with because they have all kinds of side effects before they even start on a drug. They're, they all have nausea, they all have dizziness, they all have falls. And so we're seeing those things, but it looks about in, in what we'd expect. So we, we think that the safety is pretty good. You know, so when you ask, where would this go? Well, if it really does come out to be as safe as it appears, um, this would be something which we would start people on as soon as we got the diagnosis and hopefully we can prevent people from getting worse. Um, right now we're, we're using the, um, we're using the preparation that is used in Europe right now, which is a 75 milligram sustained release. So the patients are actually taking 14 capsules a day. If we were to have some sort of regulatory approval, we would go back and actually make capsules, uh, in the right size. Um, so Health Canada has, has actually backed this, and this partly because we're an academic center. Uh, it may be harder in the United States. Uh, so I've, I've worked a little bit with a company called Zywi, and, and they were not successful in getting the FDA to approve a trial. Uh, basically, they wanted more safety data, which is all 40 years old, and so they wanted it redone. But it's certainly something that um, American, our, our American colleagues are gonna to have to look at and decide uh, how to get over or get through.